Hello and welcome to episode 30 of I'm Fine. Triple double digits, isn't it? Just double digits? Well, yeah, but three of them. Three, three lots of double digits. Two lots, tens and twenties. Oh, uh, we're not into the, you mm, know, the, the birthdays. birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll come up. Yeah. One day. This is the chat between myself, Damo, and the podcast world's answer to Anne Robinson. Mark, you, that's going to take you a bit of time, isn't it? To kind of Just leave that one with me a minute. Face like a bulldog. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. What was she on? No, watchdog, mate, is, is my reference. Consumer Affairs. Okay, I was thinking you see where I'm going show. with this. Oh, The uh, Weakest Link? Yeah. No, not that. No, okay. Yes, I see where you're going. Okay. I've got some more consumer news, actually, which I hadn't even told you about. There you go. You literally are her. Or should I say Norm from Kent? Yes. <laughs> it's the chat around the subjects of health, wealth, well-being, fitness, sport, conspiracy, and tales of goldfishes in wash basins. We're all work in progress, and this podcast is no exception. In short, it's a poke at our perfectly imperfect lives, and if we can make just one person feel like they're not alone in all this madness, then our work here is done. If you haven't already subscribed to us in your favourite podcasting app, then please do. Please do. It's a great way to have all of our latest episodes delivered directly to your device as soon as it's published. And if you have a spare minute, then please do leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And in return, you'll have our eternal gratitude. So, coming up, warm-up and stretch. Um, we'll see if there's any developments on the hot water bottle um, saga. <laughs> Not now! <laughs> It worked like valet. Uh, we're going to have a little roundup of the last 30 episodes, looking at our themes, crusades, and latest tag cloud. Yeah. Um, and in brain food, we're going to be, I've got down here now, mm -hmm. a little bit of a business meeting. Mm -hmm. We're looking at mutualism and symbiosis. Yeah. Cool. And it might be, I think there might be a little bit of spooky in terms of where, what I was doing before you. <laughs> that was a bit weird. Before you sent me that text this morning. Okay. Well, we'll get I to think that. it might just come together like a hand in a glove. Yes. Like Tom and Jerry. Yeah, they just released a film. Well, not they. <laughs> they just released a new film for 2021, Tom and Jerry. Film? Hmm. Or a cartoon? Well, a cartoon film then. Okay. <laughs> well, they're back, are they? Yeah. With cool. a vengeance. What have they been doing? I don't know. I just saw that there was an advert for it. Okay. Maybe you can look into that later. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I do like Tom and Jerry, though. Yeah, only old school, though. I don't like... It's a bit like when they had bloody Scrappy-Doo and Scooby-Doo. Oh, and they redid it. Or the, or the newer version. Yeah, but the new yeah. Tom and Jerry lost the intrinsic sort of... Oh, did it? Yeah. Thomas! Thomas! <laughs> Was she even in it? I don't know what her name is. Mama. The, the lady, mama. With, the, the lady yeah. with the broom. Yeah. I don't think we ever saw her, did we? No, just saw her feet yeah. and the uh, bottom of her petticoat or yeah. whatever it yeah. was. And we have some mailbag items and it's highly likely we'll probably have another business meeting on Mike, on Mike later on. Um, how are you? I'm, I'm good, but I am slightly nervous today. Why? Well, normally I, I recognise that we do have a degree of, sorry, you instill a degree of preparation in us. Uh -huh. So I sort of come here thinking... I've got a few little left field things, yeah. I'll chuck this and I'll <laughs> chuck that. But I sort of know where we're going. Yeah. And today, it's sort of, I'm, I'm lacking direction, I think. I've, got, I've prepared stuff, but what, I just... What, by me? Yeah, I guess. Why? Because I have... Uh, what's, what's happened that's different? Well, it's like you what said... What hasn't happened? But... Well, that you said today, should we have a business meeting on air? Yeah. Which I think... The other thing I was going to do, which I haven't done... I often start like that, wasn't it? <laughs> this is something I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, got told off on, I got told off on my course today. and um, Just out of interest, you haven't yeah. got your new hat on. You got your, 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 another I've gone hat back on. to Adidas, yeah. Have you been like in a, in a fight with a hedge or something? Or have you been cutting hedges or? In what respect? <laughs> you got like a half a hedge right on top of your <laughs> On top of my hat? Yeah, it just looks like you've... I don't, not half, I am exaggerating, but it does look like you've been doing yeah, some gardening before you got here. I can put it on your floor now. Just hoovered. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, sorry. Where were we? Where were You're we? getting told off. Oh, yeah. It's um, on the course. They said uh, we did a mindfulness and it was, a, it, I enjoyed it. It was a good mindfulness, sort of breathing exercise. And when we were asked for feedback, 
they asked a couple of people in the group and then she said, Mark, you know, how did you find that? And my first sentence was, someone else recently did a mindfulness that I listened to and I wasn't totally happy with that. And she went, what, Mark, I asked you, mm-hmm. how did you find that <laughs> mindfulness? And you're reflecting back on something. Mm-hmm. And so one of the sayings on this mindfulness course is this rivet yourself to now. Mm-hmm. And it was so telling, my response to how did you find something that you've just done for five minutes was, mm. I wasn't very happy a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a little bit of an insight of what it's like to do a podcast with you, hasn't she? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we're all learning. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm flagging a bit. I'm not. not fi- I'll carry you. Yeah, that's basically what I was mm. going to ask. We've taken a break. Hold, hold me, Mark. <laughs> Tell me it's going to be Why are all you right. fragile? Why are you fragile? I've just got up with a, like a, I think I might have overdone the takeaway last night. What, as in quantity? Uh, y- yeah. You got a big stack of low alcohol beer out there, haven't you? Yeah. You went That for didn't it. help, actually, just having no... It makes you think you're drinking, doesn't it? Uh, maybe. I don't know whether it was just the gas in it or something, but my mm. stomach's a bit... Yeah. Today, I'm just feeling a bit of a, a, bit of a headache, just pop some pills, you know, I'm in one of those, oh God, oh God. Fucking hell. <laughs> What? People have been waiting what? days for this. One of the <laughs> one of the big highs well, of my week. Yeah, in a well, week. Well, I'm letting people down because I'm in, feeling a bit a, iffy. Yes, fucking shut up. Be more Kid Jensen and less John Peel. Come on, Kid Jensen. Kid Jensen. I know. You know. You're talking about. Look at our demographic. I'm a child. Half, I'm a child of compared to you. <laughs> so is Kid Jensen in that way. No, you, you know Kid Jensen. Was he a DJ? Radio He's a DJ, DJ, Radio One DJ, and then changed. Was he blonde? It was on radio. I couldn't see. <laughs> You've never seen what he looks like. No, deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, the mis- the mysteries kept me going. Uh, thanks for the gift, though, this morning. It felt like um, usual Saturday form has, has, has come back. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. It was I a good it, one. It did make me smile. It was a cat attacking a small child. <laughs> yeah, quite badly. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more violent right than it probably actually is. Oh, I don't know. The child fell. That probably. was all right. The ch- children can fall. They're really good at falling, aren't they? They've yeah, got far to go. No. Uh, well, they've so got they... the rest of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> if they can avoid cat violence. Yeah. <laughs> Catastrophes. Way. See? Bubbling. Oh. Yeah, you're going to, yeah, I'm glad you're on form today. I'm going to try and keep my volume consistent because I realised when actually the music stuff, music episode, yeah, which I thought was all right. Loved it. You get, you get more feedback than I do. Oh, no, I've had the normal feedback. Oh, if you're saying, if you're seeing Demo... Can you tell him that I thought the idea of the one touch with the coat was brilliant? Oh, if you're seeing, if you're seeing Demo, I loved listening to him laugh on the, the music special. Yeah, that's, that that's my normal the second person that said the coat thing is really good? Third. I, I didn't tell you the first one because I was pissed off. Oh, yeah. it's pri- I'm feeling so much better. Yeah, so that's the feedback, yeah. Oh, I'm crying. Great. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, I realised that when I actually started talking about my feelings. Yeah. I actually kind of went like that. I started talking it really quietly. Did you? <laughs> yeah. And I had to turn up in the car. I was like, come on, boy, speak <laughs> up. Spit it out, lad. Yeah. And it's like when it gets all a bit, you know, yeah. a bit emo, it gets a bit difficult, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you start thinking, what are we doing this for? Spilling our guts. Mm. I knew, I mean, we do self-congratulate. I, we had had that discussion beforehand about the self-indulgence, and I just felt listening back that there was that balance between yeah there was a bit telling her telling people about stuff but that's mm. that's what we do yeah but i think we've been talking a little bit about the, the links to mental health and i think yeah it, i think it is important yeah it? well i think it was it was those bits that are the difficult bit it's easy yeah. to go this is why i like this record yeah yeah because it makes me feel funny inside or it makes me feel sad or whatever but then when you get she get into the the why you know the real whys yeah and, and then the mood based stuff and yeah then it all gets a little bit oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah, I like hear, hearing people talk about their dreams. <laughs> but I think is it what you meant that when people just suddenly come out with something that you necessarily didn't ask for? So if you went, do you sleep okay? Did you dream about anything? You'd expect an answer. Is it so? Is it when people just volunteer stuff that you probably haven't asked, or is it the fact just dreams are boring when people relay them back? I, I think the last one I, I have partly I think because of maybe because of the supplements magnesium does zinc and magnesium together there's something called ZMA zinc uh-huh. magnesium and one of the B vitamins which I should know but I won't can't remember at the moment I started taking it quite a long time ago and the intensity and vivid nature of my dreams meant I just I'm just on magnesium now does that help you dream 
or it, it's it, if you if we're not going to do it now but if you look up zma and b6? dreams b6 yeah but it's something like 750 percent of the recommended daily dose dose of b6 <laughs> is it right? and it's there for a reason to, to link with you it take it every day magnesium. i did this... yeah i don't anymore oh, okay but the dreams and i i do you remember them because oh, I, yes, I know I'm dreaming, I just cannot remember anything. Literally 4D dreams, the most intense. And whether it's good or bad, they're intense. Right. But you remember every little bit. You wake up from the first five minutes. So that's the bit about relaying. They're okay if they're all right dreams. If, they, if they're a little bit, you know, ang- yeah. if well, I don't know about you, but most of mine are anxiety ones. I'm just pro- constantly solving most problems. Of mine's People are like asking me questions. Like, lamb, oh. Lambs and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, unicorns. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rainbows. i don't believe that for one minute <laughs> it, no it's that but just anarchy it's just isn't it i imagine it's got unicorns and fluffy clouds in it but you, you, you it's unicorns carnage. pulling their horns <laughs> off and like stabbing puppies yeah <laughs> yeah yeah unicorn based slaughter <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah but they can really mess you up can't they if you remember them sometimes yeah you can get up and have a f- and feel a certain way and not remember anything about what you've done. Yeah. I, I dreamt of my mum and dad this week, which was All right. just, and I can still picture it now, but the intensity and the level of details. So I was in a hospital. <laughs> People don't want to hear about dreams. <laughs> Let me tell you about my dream. Yeah. No, it doesn't I did matter. ask, it's not important. so it's okay. Um, whereas I talk to other people and they'll go, I'm lucky if I get a dream a month. I yeah, remember. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would say every night I get four. It's like going to it's like going to Cine World every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably better. No one interrupting with opening food packets. Oh, nothing it, worse. I, yeah, I can't. You, and cooked food now, fucking burritos and what in in the cinema? Yeah, yeah it stinks, doesn't yeah. it? It's disgusting. You don't like analysing dreams, do you? We, I remember we had a chat about that. You think no. it's a load of absolute hogwash? Yeah, yeah. Sagittarius. <laughs> always, Sagittarius don't believe dreams. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, horoscopes yeah. uh cassette tapes yeah you mentioned them in the in the episode mm-hmm. the first car i ever had was a i think it's a mark four escort the thing about being a, being the youngest of three when you're growing up you get hand-me-down toy you get all the shit hand-me-down stuff yeah. right that you yeah. don't really want then when you go to school start secondary school you get all this, the hand-me-down uniforms yeah. it's shit yeah right and then which you get... is tough because you've got two sisters <laughs> <laughs> every three minutes <laughs> that's what we agreed yeah this is a little countdown here so yeah. we've got to get one in quick gag time yeah um and then i got 17 and i'm gonna start to get hand-me-down cars and it kind yeah. of got cool anyway so that was my that was my first car but i just remember the footwell was just basically just full of full of cassette tapes and you'd be driving along kind of yeah. doing that really dodgy <laughs> reaching down into the footwell almost just do a pot you know a pot luck lucky dip and then just grab one and bang it. And that's the great, you could pull it out and just throw it. Yeah. It's never going to sound rubbish the next time you fed it in. Yeah. And did but you it, did you have titles on yours, like something like... Oh, it was all scribbles, so you couldn't... Yeah, June but, Ganja. <laughs> and it's like, there's no cue to what, what the do music you think? is. I think you did probably you think had... ever had anything with The that whole listings of the LP. <laughs> yes. well, yeah. It's but, a green day and beautiful writing. Yes, track one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I used to like that. And then when you got to, when you get a CD player, oh, wow, I've got a CD player in the car. And you go, unless you're getting lucky to have a multi-changer. Yeah. But then you're like, you can't, this is really bad. You can't, you shouldn't drive and muck around with cassette tapes anyway. But you couldn't drive along and muck around trying with CDs and trying to handle them gently. And mm. you need two hands for that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. It's like he's handling a record, isn't it? Yes. Almost. Yeah. Like, then you just can't throw a CD on there. I, I did know someone who did do that. Did what, just would take the CDs out and just throw them on the floor. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> You're going, yeah, I did that. Yes, of course I did. <laughs> when CDs first came out, they spread marmalade on them to show them how in- indestructible they were. Right, yeah. Have you ever washed a CD? Only a marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on. Bottom of your cup. Oh, you said all the CDs in the bottom of your cupboard. Yeah. And the, that was okay. But when you said they were all in the wrong boxes. I'd have now, that's what I call music, <laughs> 74. <laughs> yeah. I have, yeah, I thought I'd go there and start to hyperventilate. Okay. Although I was called Messi this morning. Because you're a good footballer? <laughs> that was three, three that minutes. Was three minutes. <laughs> uh, Wizard and Chips. Mm. You've mentioned that a few times and I've not even yeah. looked it up. I think I knew what it was, but I never really looked it up. Wizard and Chips was a British comic magazine that ran from 18th of October 1969 to 27th of October 1990. It's yeah. quite a run. Mm. When it merged with the comic Buster. Were you a Buster fan? No, only Wizard and Chips. By 1990, I just said no more comics. 
<laughs> time to stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm all grown up now. <laughs> uh, as with most comics of the time, Wizard and Chips was dated one week ahead of the day. It actually appeared on newsstands. I mean, yeah. was that yeah. a thing for comic? Not to uh, have. It happens now with um, yeah, with, with magazines. magazines. You go in there, yeah. like, the Christmas know. special in August, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But I guess maybe comics hadn't done that traditionally. Maybe that's what they're doing. Okay. It seemed like a bit of an extraneous fact, really. Mm. Uh, it had no relation to earlier British comic, Illustrated Chips. I mean, none of this means anything to me. No, no. Have you seen the the Lord Mayor of... Um, or the Mayor, I mean, not, not be the Lord Mayor. The Mayor of Liverpool has just been done oh, just, for fraud. Just been hurt. You yeah. know Derek Hatton's been there as well. Who? Yeah, the Derek Hatton. Uh, God, you're so young. <laughs> anyway, look him up. Ask your dad. <laughs> No, but very left-wing, pro-union, very, right. like, anti-government. And the two right. of them have been done before. But I think the Lord Mayor of Liverpool is known as um, Chippy Tits. <laughs> is he? Yeah. We'll look it up in a minute. Who oh, by? What, everyone in everyone Liverpool? Everyone in Liverpool. Liverpool. Chippy Tits. Oh, yeah. God, there's too, much to, there's too much to look up here. Mm. Uh, the format of Wizard and Chips presented the comic as being divided into two separate parts, a yeah. novel idea at the time. One part was called Wizard. And guess what the other part was called? <laughs> You're not joining in? No. Um, it's with, like pantomime, isn't it? <laughs> I refuse to speak at pantomime. Uh, with chips existing as a separate pull-out section in the middle, the slogan, mm. two comics in one, double the fun, yeah. was used. In the offices of publisher Fleetway, Wizard and Chips was always regarded as one comic. In common with most British comics of the time, both sections originally had some of their strips printed in semi-colour using black, white and red duotone, mm -hmm. with others in plain black and white. To reinforce the distinction between the two sections, the duotone strips in chips were later changed to black and white and blue. Yes. Yeah. Wizard and Chips went full colour on the week of 4th of May 1990. It was shame for you because you yeah, just stopped, stopped your, yeah. your subscription. <laughs> Not now, Mark. Do you have an update for us? If you, the Anne Robinson of the podcast world. To be honest, if you think that I just sit around all day looking at Argos reviews. Pretending you're Norm of Kent. Yeah. Underscore no, I'm one. Norm of London. Norm of Kent was the one before. I went London just to put them off oh, the yeah. scent. Oh, you're Kent. Norm de Plum. That was, <laughs> yeah, Norm de Plum. That was very funny. Um, I don't want to make a big fuss of this. <laughs> it's too late, too late for that. <laughs> People are literally tuning in just for this. Yeah, they didn't answer my question. I've asked them again, as I promised, because yeah. I'm going to try and deliver. So I asked them another question about, is it okay to heat this in the microwave? But they haven't got back to me on that. I wouldn't expect them to get back to me this quick. Okay, so I did go back into Sainsbury's. And like I said, anything to do with not now hot water bottles has been removed, like it never happened. Do you think someone's actually put it in the microwave and, and lost limbs? And Sainsbury's are almost going bust because of the... Yeah, yeah. they just don't want the story to, to come out that someone's been maimed. <laughs> so two people are actually looking at not now water bottles at this moment and eight well, one of them is you right yeah. <laughs> and eight have been bought in the last 24 hours that doesn't suggest success to me the reviews have gone from 4.7 last week to 4.8 which means there's another review there okay right so we've had keeps me warmer than my home radiator yeah had that one. we discussed that yeah perfect stocking filler if yeah, you've got yeah. misshapen stockings yeah. <laughs> and somebody who thought it was a kettle the fourth one has come in from the Webbers, 45 to 54 Derbyshire, so probably a family effort, I'm guessing. Uh, they've given it uh, four. This is quite interesting. They've given it a five-star review. Yeah. Four out of five for heat retention. Four out of five for design. That's I, not five, I'd then. suggest to the Webbers that's four. Yeah. Average, I'm no good at maths, but the average is at four, Just isn't wait, it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type this in now. Dear Argos, <laughs> having read your recent review by the Webber. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll, I'll give you the... Hot water bottle was bigger than the picture suggests. It it isn't true to life size. When was you anyone holding? No, it was just the, the thing on its own. So it's not actually three hundred pixels square. Then is it? <laughs> like so it that's on the, the size. So on my phone, that that's <laughs> it's about the size of your to thumb. thumb. It's, yeah. it, so it's bigger than that. Yes, right. Which is, I think, the webers are happy about. I don't think value they were for money. If they, if they were buying a, a, th a th you know a thimble sized yeah, and it comes water in bottle as big as what, you'd be made up, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I, th I suppose it wouldn't work if it was thimble size because it would be like the, the example we used is when your partner comes to bed and the duvet comes and yeah, he's going, you can't see I it. can't even see what that <laughs> says. Put your glass, not, oh, sorry, not now. <laughs> um, hot water bottle is bigger than the picture suggests, so good. Mm -hmm. It has a very fluffy exterior. Right. Uh, that would be good for those that like the feel of fleece. Has good heat retention and a fun design. Right. Five out of five. Do you know the thing that springs to mind? These people are walking amongst us. 
and they're allowed to vote. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a lot of time on my hands. No. But I thought... Busy week, haven't you? Yeah. So I looked at another hot water bottle that I think is something to do with Harry Potter. Hedwig, is that a thing? Mm. I don't yeah, know. isn't it Robbie Cole train Hedwig? Okay. £15 for a 500 mil hot water bottle, just the oh, third no. of the size of Not Now. Sorry, Hedwig's an owl. Yeah, it's an owl on the I hot water bottle. I people screaming at they go, you idiot! But I think it might be on Harry Potter. There was a Harry oh, is there Potter. A picture of, is there a picture of a, an owl on there? Yeah. So you let me say Robbie Coltrane. Yeah, and it's, more, it it's more clearly like, not Robbie Coltrane. No, it's a hot water bottle with Robbie Coltrane's face on. You were right. No, it's not. No, of course it isn't. <laughs> Robbie Coltrane's <laughs> well, I'm face. Trying to, I'm trying to... Heat retention, one out of five. Design, one out of five. Score, one out of five. Oh, this crikey. person isn't happy. Not this happy. is Ed, 65 or over, Hitchin. All that Hitchin is making me scratch, says Ed. <laughs> I, <laughs> music special part two. <laughs> I, <laughs> God, you can't laugh too much at your own jokes. I ordered them. I hadn't heard that one before. Was... I ordered. <laughs> I ordered the mini hot water bottle you show previously, but was supplied with the full size model. Not once, but twice. God, they're obsessed with size, aren't yeah, they? But have they not I, worked out the internet has pictures of things that are slightly I, smaller than they are in real life? But you've ordered the mini one and you've got the big one. Result, surely. Yeah. At which stage, stage I cancelled the order. Having stood around for at least 10 minutes on each occasion, my fuse was running short. So. Wow. Right, so someone who's so impatient, right? And is, you know, is obviously a busy person, has the time to go and write that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's Amazing. waited 10 minutes, but I'll go on the site. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. I just thought Hedwig has got a lot of good press, a lot of reviews. Mm-hmm. I'll have I a imagine it'd be popular. See if this rings any bells. Perfect stocking filler for daughter who's mad about Harry Potter. This is why I thought it was Harry Potter. If Hedwig isn't Harry Potter now. Oh, it is definitely Harry Potter. Okay. This review was by Thorpey. What? 2534. Thorpey's York, obsessed with... York, 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 UK. Are you kidding me? How many water bottles is he He's already bought buying? two already. Unbelievable. Now, Thorpe isn't... No, Norm was the one who put it in the microwave, isn't it? Norm was the one who thought it was a kettle. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then this... Okay. I wow. think I think Thorpe might have been ideal for a stocking filler. Right. Okay. But Hedwig is as well. So... Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I wonder what their Christmas is going to be like. Hot, hot, hot. So, work-life ballet. I thought we'd do a little uh, wrap-up of the last 1,600 minutes. Mm-hmm. Because this all started a chat around training, or at training, wasn't it? Yeah. We were training, we were chatting, and realised we have a few things in common. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did back then when we started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got our own <laughs> separate ways now. <laughs> yeah. Now we're stuck. Yeah. We're too... <laughs> yeah, none of us have got the balls to tell each other we don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> um, footballers has brought us together, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. In terms of the, the, re- the reasons for us meeting each other. So obviously yeah, we, yeah. We, we love football. And a mint at it. <laughs> Just get that in. I guess we started talking about subjects of kind of emotional numbness and loneliness and depression and moods and food and business and productivity and mm-hmm. music and everything uh, therein. Both have a kind of natural curiosity and desire to learn new stuff, right? Yeah. You're probably, you know, you like to dig deep, don't you, and kind of deep dive on stuff. Yeah. The doing mind, as I've been told in mindfulness. Oh, that is? Yeah. So okay. there's a doing mind, which is... Did we talk about this? Is this the, this is the Venn diagram? No, this is the next Venn diagram. Oh, up. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> I've got my book here. I could share. So the wise mind, which we discussed before, yeah, yeah, that's right. which was the Venn diagram of the, the meeting mo- of the emotional, emotional and the logical. Yeah. This is the progression now. The wise mind is the meeting place of the doing mind and the being mind. And the doing mind, which I think I fall under a wee bit, uh-huh. is around one of the quotes was <laughs> made me smile today, is you see thoughts as facts. So, Interesting. So you're 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 having thoughts and you're setting yourselves targets and achieving and goals and constantly competing and constantly So that I've got a thought, I need to now do this this and this okay so they're less a- less abstract is that fair they're less yes. kind of ethereal they're like almost like things to take actions on right yeah rather than things just to put you and fly around your brain and yeah and it doesn't mean necessarily that it's necessarily or you believe them believing them enough to act is it about belief in them or well there is this bit that they said that you see thoughts as facts where as the being mind can see thoughts as emotions ah, right. I guess so you can sit and contemplate sure. 
what they were saying is that if you have too much of the doing mind yeah. and you don't have the being mind, then you lack okay. the things like self-care and retrospection and that sort of... And it made me think on that music special, listening back, when yeah. I went, I don't listen to music mm. to relax. I look at it to get high or low. And that summed it's up, really I think, good, this yeah. mindfulness now. Mm. And so what they're saying is if you have too much of one, yeah. then you're going to miss out. You know, So if you're constantly competing you're going to miss out on the self-care and the emotion and the retrospection. Okay. If all you sit down is live through your dreams, you won't get out of bed sure, and you, yeah. you're into another yeah, yeah. problem. Okay. Um, I think, can we... Um, come back to it? Yeah. Yeah. In a big way, I think. Yeah. It's really interesting. Was really, and I'm just here going, I want to know more, but... There were some fantastic <laughs> things which I'll share and we can maybe do a bit of a special on this fantastic um, yeah, ways really. of sharing how you can get that balance you know practical solutions about getting that balance we'll come to i think we'll come to this in a minute it's definitely one of our yeah. tag cloud words is balance yes i mean just yeah. everything because here's this here's that we present them and go well yeah some people have got a shit ton of that mm. not much of this yeah that's cool um you know we're keen to improve ourselves mentally physically and professionally yeah i think we kind of touched on all those things and much of what we talk about aligns with the idea of Pushing the peanut forwards. And this mm. is this is a phrase that I found myself using a lot and can't remember where it came from or actually if it is the thing I'm meaning it to be. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up today. Um, have you heard of that phrase, pushing the peanut? Yeah, and I'm sort of visualising it now. Is it yeah. like someone pushing like literally with a nose along the well, ground? Nose, interesting you should say that. Okay. Or not. Again, <laughs> depending on whether you give I a shit it, or not. I reckon it will be interesting. Tell <laughs> um, me. So pushing the peanut boards, it, well, it means making steps every day, however small, to achieve the goals you set for yourself. Yeah. So we went with small steps. Yeah. We could have gone with pushing the peanut. I mean, it's a little bit more evocative, isn't it? Mm. In 1916, there was a book called The Mary Dawson Game Book. And in there, there was a, a game called Peanut Push, mm -hmm. which is a race uh, in which peanuts are pushed around the room with lead pencils or walking sticks. I think it's developed to fingers and noses. Yeah. Um, and wasn't there a guy who like pushed a sprout up? Everest or Mount something. Snowden. Yeah. No, not Everest. <laughs> Mount Snowden. Yeah. But yeah, with his with his nose. Yeah. Didn't he for charity? I can hear your mind going. No. <laughs> I was just thinking I could probably do it quicker. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, because because we, we talk about a lot of stuff about productivity and we kind of touch on business and wealth and money and those kind of things. And I guess you could easily go. You know, we kind of talked about this in the kitchen a little bit, didn't we, a minute ago? On, on your mindfulness me. in terms of um improving ourselves yeah and we both have that need to do it in different ways yeah i do a lot most of mine through my through my work and maybe music and things but it can it can be relentless and difficult i think we touched on it before for, for me and other people in terms of expectation and bars we've talked yeah. about that yeah. high, high yeah. and low bars we've always said it's totally okay not to be like that and sometimes we wish we weren't yeah. because it's yeah, yeah. It, you know it makes for a bit of an easier life i think it's kind of important to say that we're putting all this stuff out there but of course each to their own hmm. we're not no. kind of saying do this you need to i guess what i'm saying it's okay not to improve yourself yeah but you get you get into the whole existential stuff and you what why are we all here What's what the is point? improvement <laughs> yeah and i guess the kind of thing that unites us is that need to kind of to kick on and uh, so the things we've talked about yeah in the last 30 episodes it's quite a lot uh, yeah. i'll try and rattle through them in episode one we kicked off with a heartwarming story about how you helped a lady in a wheelchair and then bought her a mcdonald's and she almost choked on a 10 pound note <laughs> <laughs> We made people cry. Well, you did with yeah. that story. Yeah, that feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you feel? I mean, back just very quickly on that. Do you think? Do you think you've changed because of doing this? Has it helped focus? Is it kind of giving doing you, the podcast? Yeah, it's changed my life. Yeah, really. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alongside the mindfulness, it's the most cathartic oh. thing cool. for me at the moment. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't think I've asked you. <laughs> and also, I suppose one of the the, the situations is I can't. What, what was the date of our first podcast? Um, it was the. 30th of august so we would have done it the week before no we did it on that we recorded it the day before that's so the 29th yeah we recorded that. okay so my dad died on the 21st and so that story of mcdonald's was probably two days before he died because it's when right, he was dying yeah. in hospital yeah, yeah yeah so i think even that in terms of you just mentioning that now straight away my visualization has gone mm. back to that woman back to the yeah that time yeah taking it you know the joke it's not that long ago at all but it probably feels like there's been so much in the last yeah even yeah. just doing this if it, there's been so much we've talked about and thought about and yeah and it's just felt like it's been months and months and months rather than just three but and the cathartic thing just this is just one i'm not going to keep interrupting well i haven't very much but 
Stop judging yourself. <laughs> no, keep judging yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good material. Yeah, otherwise, you should be silent. <laughs> like a monk. Um, <laughs> I sat there saying nothing. One of the things, and this isn't self-congratulatory for, for us, this was just something that I found really touching. I think four or five people this week have, have either said to me or in one contact had said, I'm a bit sad because I've got right up to date with the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of people, one person actually well amelia said on her yeah. did you see it on her story yeah. i'm up to date someone give me one other person said i've got five i've been hanging on for five minutes of your your last one of the music special and oh, like, when's keep... the next one <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing and that made me yeah that that was the, the the fact that it's become part of people's lives in terms of and i guess it's got to be positive i'm guessing on the main because if you listen for 30 episodes yeah you're getting something from it yeah even people we know yeah they don't have to. Do they? <laughs> it's gone past the polite <laughs> stage. Yeah, just, yeah. Um, you have to be dedicated as a friend to go this yeah. 1600 minutes. In. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, we started looking at sarcopenia. I think we've, we've talked about lots of things, but certainly sarcopenia came up yesterday with a colleague of mine. We were talking okay. about weight strength training and yeah. it is important to people. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, or, again, people don't know about it. Or actually, the person I was talking to only came to it quite recently. So, um, we covered, I mean, judgment's a big one. We've just been talking about judgment, yeah. but actually you think about judgment comes in all the things we've talked about. Um, so we covered food judgment. Uh, my love for the repair shop is clear to see, uh, I think. Um, you <laughs> revealed you have a master's in common sense. Um, <laughs> uh, we've covered Bazooka Joe, Wizard and Chips, Retro Sweets. Yeah. Mm. Like to go back there, Mike. Yeah. Uh, vitamin D has come up a lot. Yeah. I've kind of highlighted, we'll come to a tag cloud in a minute, but that is one of them. Uh, weighted Blankets. Deviant dolphins. I've spouted on for vitamin D all year. Mm. Not in terms of um, us achieving anything. I'm not suggesting that in the slightest. But it is an interesting development that now two and a half yeah. million people are getting it. Yeah. Whereas three months ago when we were talking about it. It can't be coincidence. That's happening. There's been a run on hot water bottles. I yeah. mean, these things now don't just... It. Yeah, yeah, it's all coming together. We were talking about spooky, weren't we? Yeah. Nostradamus thing. <laughs> you were saying we could literally do a whole thing on all the things we've talked about and all the things that have actually come true. Vitamin maybe D. Do, yeah, maybe we could do that. You know, maybe that we should put that in as a bit of fun bookmark next time. Just yeah. list the things we've talked about. Yeah. And then go, How we changed the be, world. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and stay humble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the title, isn't it? Yeah. That's the t okay, yeah. do that. Um, uh, so we've got small steps, baby steps, tiny steps. You know, yeah. however you want to call them. Uh, the fact that you don't believe in horoscopes or that the moon landing was real. Uh, we can't run a competition to save our lives. No. Um, People still waiting for the prizes. <laughs> uh, the, uh, <laughs> the weather and the beauty of bad weather. Yeah. That's come up a lot. We'll come to that in a minute. Uh, emotional numbness has come up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we had Amelia as our first guest talking about yeah. um, gyms. Yeah. Um, uh, you got fact-checked by Facebook and USA Today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did a few days mm -hmm. later. <laughs> uh, we've talked about dopamine and the compulsion loop. Yeah. Uh, that comes back in a lot. Rainbows, moonbows. Mm -hmm. We are being played from tropical zing to overpriced chocolate. Yeah. Um, our second guest, Brian, talked about pain. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of love off the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> your heart. Yeah. Oh, your heart. How is it? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Um, established bristol invented everything known to man mm -hmm. crisps is a big one i've, I've put them bold because that's definitely our tag they've out. almost taken over from coffee i think true true our brains our hearts and our guts and i think that's something we have to keep coming back to because yeah. i thought that was, yeah. that was amazing uh sleep and music i think we've got four crusades mm -hmm. understanding food and drink and knowing what you're putting in your mouth yeah like saying, just understanding putting some information out there and helping people find facts about food mm -hmm. um which reminds me, we probably could do a calorie deficit one because we haven't really touched that. And I think that's no. really, really good. Yeah. So basically we all have a choice and um, a well-informed choice means we can start to remove unwanted judgment. Mm. That's kind of the thing mm. that came, came going back. Uh, being confident in public gyms. We kind of haven't really gone back to it since we talked to Amelia, but mm. whether you're body confident or not, gyms can be a difficult place to be, let alone training. Yeah. Very much uh, physical and mental battle within our everyday social dynamics. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not just gyms, is it? No. You're kind of going out. Some people don't like going out running. They don't like to be seen. Yeah, they there's been a the lot recently about like the abuse women are getting yeah. running, which I... Shit, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, listening, understanding and caring for our bodies. We talk about many things that have a huge impact on our physical and mental health from sarcopenia, dopamine, sleep, pain, environment, such as yeah. weather. Um, come back to the environment in a sec. Um, small steps. And this has really become a jump off point for all of the above. Actually, there's so much that we hear, listen to, feel pressured by internally and externally, consciously and unconsciously, which I think is the real dangerous bit. Mm. We don't realize these things are going in and sticking, mm. that it's often too overwhelming to absorb, let alone digest, analyze and decide what's right for us. Going back to the whole point of our existence, there's yeah. so much stuff and we're under no illusion that any of this is easy. And um, that's essentially what this pod is about. But if we can find just one small step amongst all this information and disinformation, which I've also talked yeah. about, then that's probably all we need. Yeah. Even if we found one, one tiny thing out of all those subjects we've talked about, back to the kind of moving things on, improving things, I think because that's what drives us. Yeah. I think that is really important. And I think we're driven I by it, sort of anecdotal bits. I can remember, um, it's interesting because I don't think this person listens to the podcast anymore, but um, it was someone who I know who bought a weighted blanket for her son and was saying the noticeable changes in his right. sleep patterns that's and good. his calmness at mm. night. And so, yeah, it's those, it is those tiny gains. It, it, yeah. We're not getting above ourselves that we're changing no. the world. We're definitely not. But it's, I think you're right about the disinformation. Sometimes we all say something and people go, oh, I actually did think that you yeah. couldn't do X, Y, and yeah. Z. Yeah. Um, it's like with the vitamin D. I was going to raise a question on my Insta stories and go, has anybody who's seen this Insta story, has their GP ever mentioned <laughs> vitamin D? And you, mm. I, I would guess 95% are going to say no. Well, they'll, they'll dish out antibiotics like it's going out of fashion, won't they? Yeah. If you've got, a, you know, I think it's a bit of chest infection, bang, antibiotics, yeah. bang, antibiotics. Or statins, which seem yeah. to be. So why don't they give you just... A 3 a tablet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's lots of things in there that we've covered. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the tag cloud, the, uh, the kind of the words I pulled out, it's um, sarcopenia, judgment, vitamin D, small steps, the weather, dopamine, compulsion, we are being played pain mindsets bristol crisps <laughs> sleep and music yeah there. yeah that's fair um can you remember when you said i can't remember when you said it but you said like do you think we might struggle for material <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i did on to brain food can, can i read out i don't know what this is going to be at the start to the bit you're going to talk about can i read out what you text me yeah I quote, I'm interested in ants milking aphids. I was just like, that sounds the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to see it. I, I'm not even sure I want to hear about it. It's but what you'd imagine. Is it going to make me throw up in my mouth? <laughs> I wouldn't thought so. Um, okay. It's just nature. Ants milking aphids. It just sounds rank. Shoot. What you got? When I s Where's this come from? How, how did you get onto this? Let's take one step back. Did, did you send a text going... Where are we going with the next pod? <laughs> <laughs> I send you one every week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I did. No, I said, if you go, I was drafting it out, building it up. And I just said, have you got anything you wanted to add to particularly this bit, the brain food bit? So I've got, and you went, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a page there in my notes. Uh -huh. And I think we've gone through my tabs. It might be useful just, this is how my brain works in terms of inputs. Mm -hmm. Your pee should be the color of light yellow, not clear. I wanted to talk about that. What now? No. Oh, just some at some point? Yeah. Okay. Stalin's girlfriend, Bullseye. Don't know what that means. What, as in a TV show? I don't know. I'd I just put Bullseye. Like that. I used to love that show. Yeah. The scared of death quote, which I don't can't find anyone else has ever made. So that now is mine. I'm going to oh. trademark it. And okay. Did you look it up? No, I didn't. That I... would be so you to like trawl and go. Actually, in 1903. Not. <laughs> uh -huh. It's alleged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't find Should it. Should I do it now? Yeah. What was the phrase again? I don't remember it. I'm not... I'm not scared of death. I'm not scared of death. But isn't it a lyric? Just of no longer living. I think that's what I put. No, it's not what you said. Just of not you said living? I'm not, I'm not scared of death. I'm scared of not living. Because we were saying that living, the emotions given but by scared music. scared of not living. Yes. Google's return, no entries. Thank you, and good night. I didn't make that one up. <laughs> Last couple of things, there's, there's a lot here. Um, Argos norm, ants milk aphids, population of Mexico. I view my thoughts as facts and 77th brigade. So those that's what's been going through my head right, the okay. last 24 hours, 48 hours. Population of Mexico, before we get on an ants and aphids. What I, do you think it is? 
870 million. <sighs> You're beyond ridiculous, aren't you? What? 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 That's bigger than the USA. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. How do I... Why, why ask me? Just tell me what it is. In the moment's passed. Right. I'm never going to answer any of your questions ever again. I'm just going to be... Just well, if those last two it. have been answered... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm falling out with you. you. Put your hat on. <laughs> it's nicer with your hat on. <laughs> Come on, then. What is it? You haven't even got it to hand. No, I have. Just like I've the last it one you it's hadn't got. Down. I've, it's got it written down. I just, I'm not going to um, answer now, if it's... Hold on. Well, the population 129 million, but it doesn't mean anything now. You said 800. Okay. It's yeah. the 10th most populous... Lesson, then. Don't tenth... ask me a question. No. I won't answer one. Next time, I'll just give it as a fun fact. I yes, won't engage do. you. Just be a one-man show. Oh, you'll always show. engage me. Sorry, answer now, it's... I saw this happen on a plant. Recently? This summer. Okay. I saw ants farming aphids. Okay. I looked it up. I'd, I'd already heard about it. I then saw it happen. And oh, I thought... Can, you just, can we just kind of describe how you just lying in the grass and went, oh, or did you go looking for it? Or I think I was... Could you hear them? I can't even remember. <laughs> what is that noise? <laughs> sounds like milking. <laughs> sounds like an ant driving a combine harvester. <laughs> um <laughs> I, I knew something about this already, and I think what it was, I'd seen some aphids on a plant, and then I'd realised there were loads of ants around them, and yeah. that made me remember what I knew about ants and aphids. Right. And then when you said, what should we talk about, it just came to my mind. It hadn't Brilliant. been appropriate or nothing. Mm -hmm. the, the things you were saying about symbiosis and mutualism are summed up. There's a lot of, there's a lot of examples in the animal world of a creature protecting another creature. So it's a symbiotic relationship where both sides, a mutualism means both sides get something from yeah, it. Yeah, sure. I think immediately of, is it rhinoceroses with birds on them? Yeah, or? who take the ticks off them. Yeah. The simplest one would be bees and flowers, mm -hmm. if you think about yeah, it. Yeah. There's a few other ones. There's a, a thing called a spider crab that has algae living on it, but yeah. it disguises it and makes it look like the bottom of the ocean. So the algae's got somewhere uh, to live and the spider clever, crab's happy. Clever, clever, clever. Anyway. The difference about ants and aphids is, although it's symbiotic, it's a much more advanced relationship. And why I wanted to bring it up is I was listening to a podcast, uh, which we'll put in the notes, that a client recommended to me. And what they were trying to do on the podcast is basically find the middle ground that we've talked about before. Mm. So they were saying, instead of being red or blue or black and white or right and wrong, let's just look at the subject and talk around it rather than going, masks are bad, discuss. It's like, masks, discuss. And this guy did it for masks, for vitamin D, a couple of other things to do with COVID. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to hear someone basically, without a book to sell and without an agenda, mm -hmm. just going, well, in Denmark, they said this about masks mm -hmm. and someone else has said this. So it made me think that perhaps symbiotic relationships should be something that should be more progressed with humans. And that we've lost this thing about the community engagement. Because if you think back in the day, bartering was a big thing. Electrician friends come round and you pay him. Yeah. And then that same guy who a couple of years ago I used to train and he would pay me. Mm. And it's almost, well, if it's an hour of our time, mm. why aren't we doing all bartering? Why aren't we going, if you can come and fix two lights for me, I'll give yeah. you a training session. Yeah. Why is everything now a, a financial transaction? What do you want from me? <laughs> I couldn't I'm afford stop. you. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours do I get from you for but it, but it, an hour of me? <laughs> but I think the thing I was thinking about in terms of symbiosis is that if you've got a friend, it's fine if you're going to, you know, an expert. If you're going to an accountant, you're paying 120 quid an hour. Fine, yeah. that's the expectation. Mm -hmm. But if we're all friends and we're doing stuff together and it's for mutual benefit, yeah. an hour of my time, an hour of your time should be the same for as friends. Yes. Yeah, I, I see it as, as um, yeah. Yeah. One of the things I find is that when you're giving a service that is around, quite often around advice or information, yeah. there is an idea that that is free. So someone might say, oh, can you advise, Some, someone um, texted me the other day, and no problem with this at all, and it was a mate, and I'd be happy to do it, yeah. said, my son's looking, teenage son's looking to bulk, can mm -hmm. you give me a few ideas? Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. And I was happy to do it and I'm happy to you know, give any more information. Mm -hmm. But because it's advice and guidance, it's a free resource. Yeah. If really? I said to my electric friend, 
I've got three lights that aren't working. I'd like you to give me a bit of advice on how to mend them and you know, maybe pop around and do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's that if it's a practical skill, you wouldn't ask someone to go, I've got three lights that aren't working. Can you mend them for me? That's a classic consultancy thing, isn't it? Yeah. Value. How do you value yeah. someone's time? It's just literally what's in their head. They're not, not making you anything. No. And isn't it the, the Picasso story? The guts of it is someone was sat at a bar with Picasso and they realized it's Picasso. Mm-hmm. They said, well, could you, could you do me a drawing? And they went, yes, yeah. so we Picasso sketched something out on a napkin. Yeah. And he said, that'll be 40,000 francs, please. And he went, well, it just took you, yeah. you know, a minute. And he went, no, it's taken me a lifetime. Yes. Yeah. That's what popped in my head. Yes. For all graphic designers out there, people mm. getting into it or have been doing it for a bit and have been never, never been asked to do a wedding invite. <laughs> Don't fucking do it. Okay. In fact, never do a mate's wedding invite. It's the worst thing in the world. If you were ever asked mm. to do a wedding invite for a mate, yeah. this is what you respond with. I will do it for nothing, but you have no say on what it looks like at the end. You okay. give, I will include all the information you need on it, yeah. but what it looks like is my business yeah. and not yours. Yeah. And I'll do it for nothing. And that's, that's, mm. that's the trade-off. Mm. Never do it for money. Basically, never listen for their feedback. Yeah. Blah. <laughs> this shivers that my spine that sounds like there. personal experience it is yeah, yeah. i know everyone i know have done it has, has come to the same thing the, 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 Sorry, the point the point, the, the point you made was was exactly the point i was trying to make yeah. is that we talk about this we could group. do a lot more of it i guess we, we don't do enough is that exactly my point that, that we've we've all got our expertise and that we could farm that expertise or yeah. group it together and it would it would benefit the group beyond the individual parts yeah so if our group of mates and the seven or eight of us all go out for curry mm. and a drink and we're out for four hours mm. that four hours has the same value whether we're paid a hundred grand a year or whether yeah. we're paid 10 yeah. we don't value our time with our friends mm. based on our commercial worth yes absolutely and i think that should carry over into other aspects of our life mm-hmm. that people actually go, I'm really good at this. Mm-hmm. Even if I come around, so, so, so putting up something from Ikea, mm-hmm. it'll take me a week to put a chest of drawers together. <laughs> I'm imagining that you or someone else in the group could go, literally, Mark, I can do that in half an hour and I enjoy doing it, but I'm shit at motivating myself to do press-ups. What I'm saying is we're not sort of putting all the, the, the stuff that people can do in a big pile and going, if you, you and you did this, work to your strengths, mm-hmm. use your advantage, mm-hmm. all our lives would be easier. And there's certain things I know I don't do, but you or someone else could go, I could do that for you. Mm. But if you wouldn't mind, and it's almost like you could have a few credits. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone comes around and mows your lawn and does a fence, mm-hmm. you do then owe them, you know, three times babysitting or something. It doesn't really yeah, matter yeah. what it is, but yeah. it's no, just... It isn't. It's just the time. That's I think important. it's a really nice area, if you, a nice place to be. If you, if with your friends, you can get to that point where you're literally not adding up the hours. Yeah. There's a kind of two way. Either that happens from the beginning or it gets to a point where something happens so often, it starts to get a little bit one-sided and you go, oh, yeah. I've been fucking putting all the hours in there. And yeah. Yeah. I've done bugger all or that time I went to look after the cat or, you know. Yeah. You know, and then, then it starts not to come back and then resentment yeah, kicks there has in. Yeah, doesn't you know, like, just, just get used. Get, and then it will gets a bit funny, doesn't it? But it's a bit like the bill at the the curry house, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Where someone goes, "No, I only had one naan, so I, <laughs> there's always one person." Yeah, yeah. So back to the ants and the aphids. Mm. Basically, humans domesticated plants, give or take about twelve thousand years ago. Ants have been farming between ten and fifty million years, they reckon. But their subsidy is going to go in January, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Especially all the fishing ants. (laughs) (laughs) So without going into a massive, we'll keep it as an extended metaphor rather than a biological lesson. Uh, Um, I I actually do want to understand what they do. Have you got that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know it. I know it. Can you tell me what? So ants farm specifically two main things. One is fungi, fungi, and one is aphids. The fungi. fungi. Are are aphids baby flies? Are aphids aphids? Aphids. They're they're midges. What are they? Aphids grow into little flying. Yeah, like little, there's little yeah. fluffy yeah, flies. Yeah, little annoying ones that you, when you're running, they go in your mouth. Yeah, and it's yeah. summer days they come out and you like yeah, whisk just, them out the way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But they go through an earlier stage before they can fly. This right. is when the ants hone in on them. Okay. So why can't I say whether it's fungi or fungi? Having grown mushrooms, you've said you both, think? you've covered all options. Yeah. So I'm not going to go into the fungi thing. Fungi thing. <laughs> I'm not going to go into the fungi thing. But basically, there are some things that ants can't digest easily. Yeah. And so they sort of feed it to the fungi. The fungi then produces something that the ants can eat. 
So the Ooh, ants feed processors. They're food processors. Yeah. But the interesting thing for me on this is that you will have seen from David Attenborough's documentaries, leaf cutter ants. Yeah. They don't eat the leaves. Those oh. leaves are being fed to fungi in their nests. Fungi? Yeah. They farm the fungi. They grow fungi. They feed them leaves. Feed What? Ants feed, like, fungi. essentially mushrooms? Yes. Leaves. Leaves? What? Yes. Do they? Yeah. Do they munch it up or just give them a... The, the, the fungi, like, assimilates it and then creates something that the ant can eat. Which is the, which is the fun, they eat the fungi? Which is, con, I think it's called conglidia. Cool. That grows on the fungi and then the ants eat that. But so, the leaf... so the aphids get food? Well, we're not so... onto aphids yet. Oh, sorry. That's, that's the fungi. So when you see the leafcutter ants they and they're all they? sort of serrated, yeah. <laughs> I always thought they'd be nibbling it. That's what they do. They carry those leaves, yeah, but yeah, they're yeah. carrying them in to feed something and okay. then they feed off that. That's sweet. Aphids eat part of a plant that is called, sounds like phlegm, I don't think it is phlegm, P-H-L-O-E-M, phlegm. Yeah. So this is part of a plant that transports sugars. So it has glucose, fructose, and something which is a complex sugar called tris, trisaccharides. Trisaccharides. Yeah, I think it's trisaccharides. Anyway, so simple sugars like fructose and a complex sugar. Yes. And what happens is when the aphids eat a plant, the mm. waste product that comes out of the aphid is called honeydew. And honeydew is really, really sweet. Cool. And this is the bit you're not going to like. It's going to make me sick. Maybe. Um, <laughs> the ants stroke the aphids with their antennae to it's get the honeydew little bit more... out and eat it. So they eat the waste products of the aphids, which is bit. rich in sugars. I do feel a little bit queer. But <laughs> why this is so symbiotic, but in the same way a little bit spooky, is that the ants actively farm the aphids. So they move them around the plants to right. the best areas right. because then they get more honeydew. Yeah. So the aphids are these little wingless Then they help creatures. them reproduce as well or not? Or do they... No, what they do is they just basically herd them. They protect them from okay. ladybirds okay. who eat aphids. So, so the ants survival are survival rate. Yeah, okay. even to the point that ants will now eat ladybird eggs before they hatch so that they well, don't... to keep the, keep keep the predators the down. Yeah. Oh. They also have been seen to bite off the aphids' wings when they're ready to fly away. They bite their wings off so they can't fly away. Because <laughs> that honeydew, see their honeydew flying yeah. off, right? <laughs> and they also secrete a chemical now that's been proven to stunt the growth of the wings. So the aphids actually become captive It was sounding to the symbiotic. Ads. It's sounding a little bit kind of... Uh, well, this is where the symbiosis comes. Enslaved now. <laughs> no, there is a bit it's of that. It's got a little bit sinister. They provide shelter for them. So they actually build leaf shelters so the aphids are protected from the weather. Okay. This is one thing I must admit I haven't looked into, but I did I did hear about this, that they actually take them, um, they actually actively move the aphids at night and put them in a safe place for them to, to spend the evening um, and then bring them out again and put them on the juiciest part of the plants. Amazing. But the aphids are happy because the aphids are just eating all day. There is yeah. a little bit of enslaving, but that, that's part of the The ants are getting a workout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Yeah, so that was it. And I was just thinking really everyone's cool. a winner on that. Aphids are eating all day, which well, they want to having do. Their, arm, you know, their wings chopped off, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, there is that bit, I guess. But That's cool. But how complex is that for yeah. something the size of mm. an ant, which is like really small? Yeah. I don't know if you've seen them, but... What, ants? Yeah, yeah it's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hmm. Now... I've got a couple of mailbag items. Do you mind if I? No, of course I don't. I was sent. Uh, I was sent one joke and told another. Right. And they're wintry jokes. I wouldn't say they're kind of Christmassy jokes. You ready for the first joke? Mm -hmm. How do snowmen get around? It's no idea. On their bicycles. You like that one? I love that one. I've been laughing off off <laughs> mic. You, you've you like, got another? You, I've got another snowman one. Would you like it? Yeah. Two snowmen in a field. One said, can you smell carrots? What's the difference between a snowman and a snowwoman? I don't know. Snowballs. We could go into the cracker business. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could. Um, this isn't going to be a regular feature, is it? 
That was it. Okay. I don't think I've ever told a joke on here. No. There's been nothing and, funny. And, and you've kept that going. <laughs> 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 that record's still intact. Have you got any mail? I don't think I've got anything to say. We're done then. Okay. Okay, I've got one. This isn't mailbag. Oh, yeah, I've got something. Yeah, this is just, this is visual. Okay. Yeah. So we quite often do this, isn't it? I'll pass you my phone and go, look at that. You'll giggle and everyone's going like, what is he doing? So picture the scene. I've got a warning on my, my big blue Mercedes. I've got a warning saying, <laughs> yeah. rectify tyre pressures. One of my tyres was down. That was urgent. Normally, that says to me, within the next three or four months, have a look at your tyres. <laughs> I was passing Sainsbury's. How many times does the warning need to go again before? Oh, it, it would go for months. It's been, they have been quite I do worry about you. Anyway, so I was passing Sainsbury's and it said free air. And I thought, I'm not going to turn down that sort of bargain. <laughs> Pulled in and there was one car in front of me mm-hmm. using the facilities, pumping their tyres. Right. And interestingly the guy pumped his tires up and then kicked the tires really hard what a lad to, to prove that Ooh, they'd actually that's all right yeah i've got as much air in there as it will take <laughs> it'll have become one of those monster trunks <laughs> <laughs> trunks trucks um anyway so i was behind him watching him kick his tires and then he did this so you can just watch have can you, you see what have he's you videoed it have you videoed him i often video people you weirdo you so what you video can, can you see what he's doing is, is that the water? <laughs> so he's got the water that you normally... Because it, <laughs> it's literally... Up, to top up your water in your engine. He's you using it just to... Car to clean, yeah, he's just cleaning his number plate with I it. I was there a quarter of an hour. He did the whole car. Oh, you are kidding me. It just... Do you re- think it's a free car wash as yes. well? <laughs> what a numpty. It was literally driveling It is, out. isn't it? It's, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do that, do you know what I'd have done? Put my finger over the end. I don't think little, there was a nut pressure to a make little it, bit, it would have made a little bit more, wouldn't no. it? But yeah, he washed his car with the free water. And as I said earlier, these people are walking amongst us. Yeah. <laughs> They're literally walking next to you in Sainsbury's. Mm. That's terrifying. <laughs> uh, that's it for this episode. Well done for getting this far, and thanks for listening. All links and references will be in our show notes. I can't actually know no references, are there? You made a couple of things. Oh, the aphid one. There is a video to go with it. So. <laughs> 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 which i won't be what well, you're gonna have to do the notes for me you're crazy aren't you? yeah i am oh yeah i never used to be i used to be able to watch like animal hospital you know with rolf, Har- oh, not Paul, rolf harris um <laughs> and i used to be able to watch, and then there was one episode once i think it's since then i, I haven't there was this little hamster having a little sty taken out of his eye and that mm. was me gone for the rest of my days please make sure you subscribe to us via your favorite podcasting app and if you're enjoying this pod then please do tell a friend and help spread the word if you're one of those trendy and successful types listening to us on a hard-earned Apple device, then please do leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, uh, as that really helps to make us look super cool and popular. We'd be very grateful indeed. Uh, give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Finecast, and you can send us an email to imfinecast at gmail.com. In the next episode, we're going to pick up the wise mind stuff, aren't we? Yeah. What, making your mind up. Making your mind up. Does half smile come back into that? Yeah. Ooh, exciting. And I might, well, I haven't run this by you. I'd like to record some meditations to go up with our um, oh. our triceps and our squats. Okay. Just for people to join in, have some fun. Nice one. Okay. We'll see you in the next episode. Yep. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>